everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong and I'm a professional engineer in the state of Florida and in this video I'm going to show you how to use a program called Bluebeam. Bluebeam is used heavily in all engineering fields including architecture, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, I mean you name it. It's a program that can help perform quantity takeoffs, you can do measurements, you can quickly and efficiently create markups. You can even collaborate with other engineers and architects in the same document, kind of like a Google Doc. But in today's video, I'm going to show you the most useful tools inside of this Bluebeam program. Let's dive right into it. All right, the first thing that I want to show you is the interface. And you notice how I have a little toolbar up here. This is how I've developed my toolbar. I know that some people might like their toolbars all the way over here to the right. What I love about Bluebeam is the customization aspect. You can grab one of these toolbars and bring it up and hook it onto the right side over here. Another thing you can do is have different types of toolbars. And in order to modify your toolbar, you can go up here to tools. You can scroll down to the toolbar. And notice how I have a few of these checked off here. I have a navigation bar, properties, edit. I got a few different toolbars. Well, in order to customize, you can go down here to customize. And I know that this looks uh, very crowded here. There's a lot of different types of tools, but I'm going to direct you over here to toolbar here. And notice how some are off and some are on. So the ones that are on are currently the ones that are all shown here within my custom workspace. So, you know, this one could be uh, shapes. This one could be edit. Let me, let me show you actually how to edit one of these guys. I'm going to go to one of the first ones here, edit. So here's my edit toolbar. Notice how I have copy, paste, format painter all checked off. This edit one corresponds to this toolbar right here because I kind of see that copy, I see the paste and the format painter. So if I wanted to add more icons up here, I can go up to categories. I can scroll through all of the different commands here in Bluebeam and actually add it to that toolbar. So let's say if I wanted a strike through, I can add that strike through over to this toolbar. And again, we're in the edit toolbar. And I can see strike through and I can press OK. Now watch it get added up top. So that's how you can start developing your different toolbars. I don't like this toolbar all the way over here to the right. I like everything right up here. So that's how you edit your different toolbars. And notice this toolbar, I'm gonna walk through a couple of different commands that I think are the most important for at least my field, which is civil engineering. I work in the land development industry and constantly we are you know, doing markups to plans, we're collaborating. So these are my most useful tools. I don't really use much outside of this. Here you have an edit text tool. And what it does is Bluebeam reads real text and you can actually go in here and edit the different text. So this wetland area, let me try to erase some things. So if I wanted to erase the word area, I could totally do that. I pressed enter, but really you just wanna escape and now your document is updated. So edit text is a really important one. Now I'm gonna show you, you can add text box. So you can add a little text box here and say Griffin was here and you know, notice how you have some different settings that you can adjust up here. I can change the color. I can change it to really whatever color I want. You can change the font. Let's do like Adobe Gothic. So you have a fill. So if I wanted this green fill and you can change the opacity of the fill, you can do that. Another place where you can adjust all of this is over here in these settings. So you have a little properties dialog box right there. And again, you can change everything from in there. So let me click this. You can change this line width. Notice how that's getting pretty crazy right there. You can change the different style of the line. I mean, you can pretty much change whatever you want. You also got highlighter tools. We should know what that is by now. You got clouds. You even have different callouts. One thing I really like is this snapshot tool. So you can do a snapshot. Let's say if I wanted this arrow somewhere else, this little north arrow, I can take a snapshot of that arrow and I can do a control V and now I got another arrow. And I think you can even scale this down a little bit, which is nice. You also have a whole bunch of different tools for shapes, arrows, lines. So if I draw a line again, you can double click here and now you have a line that you can adjust for different colors. You can even just use it as a highlight if you wanted to. You can change the style. 
But see how this line doesn't have any sort of measurement at all? If you're interested in doing some sort of measurement, let's say if I wanted to measure the width of this lot right here, you have some different measurement tools up here. You have one for length, and then you have one for polyline length. I'm gonna do this one for length. Now what it should ask you is for a scale. So you know, before I start kind of uh, just doing some measurements here, I'm gonna go up to this measurement icon over here and just ensure that my scale is at the right scale for this drawing. So right now it's in a one inch equals 50, which I am okay with. I think that was the drawing of the scale. I'm gonna to go to this length measurement tool and I'm gonna draw a length right here. So here we have 75.43. And again, you can change the settings however you want. You can make this a little bit more thick like that. You can even change the different font size if you want it to be a little bit bigger. You can make it bold. You can do a lot with this. So I really want all my dimensions to look like this. So I have a format painter tool up here. I'm gonna click that. And then now I'm gonna click what I want it to be. And this makes it really, really useful if you start doing a whole bunch of work and you want a certain look. Another thing that you can do, and this is why I really love Bluebeam, is that you can set defaults for this stuff. So if you want a certain default measurement, you can go down here to set as default. And now whenever I do a measurement, it will look exactly like that. Let me show you here. And voila. Let me show you a more advanced command. So I really love this count tool. And what you can do is you can have different shapes, right? So let me open up this properties box. Let me get that count tool open again. And I can change the color of this guy. I can change the shape. Let's do a check. And what I really love is that you can keep track of a different count. So let's say if you were adding up, you know, a certain width of lot, let's say, you know, I wanted to add up all the 75s here. Well, let's say if I was done, now you can go and actually have a count performed. In order to see your summation or your count, you can go up here and notice how I have six. Now, if you wanted to keep this count going over here, you can select the count that you just made. You can right click and you can do resume count. Now I got the tool in my hand and this will add to your count up here in that legend. So I press escape and do you see now how we're counting control structures? It says control structure and I'll show you why it shows that description. But now we have 10 control structures. You can also edit this legend here. Let's go to, you go to the properties here and you can edit the different columns. So in order to edit the different columns, you go to your properties and let's do edit columns. And these are the different columns that you can have. So let's say if I, I didn't really care about the author or the date, you could totally remove that. Now again, this is so great for quantity takeoffs. I mean, imagine you have this huge plan set and you're going through and you're counting different structures or you're counting certain lots. I mean, whatever you want to count, it can all keep track of this in that legend. Now, let me show you why the description said control structures. So let me go back to these little check marks here and you can change the description of these guys by going to the properties. So right now it's corresponding to this subject up here. But if I wanted to call it, let's say 75 foot lots, that automatically changes and it should update in that description in the legend. I wanna show you really quick that this also works with your polyline length command. And I find this very helpful, at least in the land development industry, when I have different sewer or stormwater pipes, you can actually just add it all up and create a legend. So let's do some polyline lengths right here. Uh, right now it's it's pink. I don't really I don't really mind it to be pink. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this like sanitary pipe network. And you can do the same. You can create a similar legend like we already created. If you right click, go down to legend, and we're going to do create new legend. Now, one thing is we created a new legend, but we could have totally just added it up into the same legend. But I just want to show you guys, you know, what what you can do here. So I can, I can show you how to do that. So you can right click this guy and let's just add it to the legend that we already made. Perfect. 
So notice how it switched it over. So I didn't know it would do that. So that's something that I learned. So it looks like it switched it over to the other legend. A couple important things you might want to know is notice how this is just free to flow. Well, let's say if I wanted to lock something, you can right click and lock it here right in place. That way if anyone comes in, they won't accidentally move it. Here you can do unlock and now we're able to move it again. Another thing I love about Bluebeam is the different view properties. I'm going to show you guys how to split some screens. Up here we're going to go to view and let's do split vertical. I want to be looking at one you know, part of the structure table here while looking in the plan view on the other side. What I love about this is the ability to just increase efficiency. Because if I'm looking at the structure table over here to the right, I don't want to have to keep going back and forth between all these pages. I want to be able to see this structure table and go right over here and start checking my work. So that's how you can split screens. And again, I did that by going up here to the View tab. Now, if I wanted to unsplit, you just go back down, do unsplit, and now you are cooking with fire. You can also split horizontal if you wanted. You can also synchronize document, which I'll show you what that means. I'm going to go ahead and split vertical. So if you go to view and synchronize document, anything that I do over here on the right side, it's going to automatically keep up on the left side. I never really use this command, but I guess it is a nifty one if you ever need it. There's some commands below that do the same thing. So I've set up some shortcuts here. So this is a toolbar that I've generated. So I put the split vertical already down there. Huh, I didn't even know that. You can split it up in three ways. That's pretty cool. What you can also do is I got this little icon called one full page. So now that puts it to a full page. Let me do a little quick fire of a couple tools that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and make a leader call out. Now, one nifty trick that I have is if you have this call out highlighted or anything highlighted, even if you have a polyline drawn, if you hold down the control button and move it, it creates a copy. Now, if you hold down the shift button, notice how it makes everything pretty much like orthogonal, meaning just up and down, east and west here. It's making it exactly straight, which is pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to remove the leader, you can right click and do delete leader. Now it's just a text box. You can also right click this guy and do auto size text box. So let's say if you ever got too far dragged out. So if you start typing in here, it's always going to auto kind of generate back to normal. And I got some, some like enters in here. So obviously once I remove those enters, it will automatically adjust. Let me get out. So it can auto adjust there. One last thing that I'll show you is if you draw a little polyline here, I'll show you how to add some vertices. So I drew a polyline, and if you hold down the shift key, notice how when I hover over it, there's a plus sign, so you can add some vertices in there. But let's say if you wanted to take them away, you can hold shift again and delete them. That's all I have for today, guys. I hope that helped you learn a little bit more about Bluebeam. Again, I just wanted to show you guys how to use some different tools to improve your efficiency for markups. If you have any questions related to Bluebeam, please feel free to comment below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button and I will continue to make more. Hope you guys have a great night and I will see you in the next video.